Good morning. This is Kelo Land on the Go with all you need to know and news and weather as you start your Sunday. We also have your boredom busters coming up at first, our top story. Investigators say they'll release more information later today on an incident that brought a heavy law enforcement presence west of Sioux Falls overnight. Kelloland News was on the scene at 261st Street and 464th Avenue near Hartford, where several law enforcement vehicles were parked. We don't know yet what the nature of the call was. The Minnehaha County Sheriff's Department says because this is an active investigation, they cannot release any information at this time. They say the South Dakota Highway Patrol and Sioux Falls Police Department are insisting in their investigation. Stay with Kelloland News and Kelloland.com for updates on this developing story. Two people in Sioux Falls were taken to the hospital early this morning for what Fire Rescue says was possible carbon monoxide exposure. First responders were called to a home on East 8th Street around 2 o'clock this morning. A third person was treated at the scene. We don't know the conditions of the two people hospitalized. Fire Rescue is recommending everyone have working CO detectors in their homes. We have an update to a triple homicide investigation in Minnesota we first told you about Saturday morning. Search teams have now recovered all of the bodies missing in a suburban Twin Cities lake. The victims are three children, two boys and a girl, all under the ages of six. Crews also recovered the body of a woman believed to be their mother. The investigation began Friday when the father was found dead in a mobile home park in Maplewood, Minnesota. Police determined that the woman had left with the children and their search began. The woman's car was found near Vandas Lake. Crews found the first child on Friday night. The other three were recovered Saturday morning. Let's take a first look at the forecast now with meteorologist Adam Rutt in the Storm Center. Good morning, Adam. Good morning, Perry, and good morning, everybody. A quiet start to the day in some areas, others not so much, where we've been dealing with showers and thunderstorms. One of the former locales was... Sioux Falls. As we take a look at Falls Park this morning, 71 at the airport, a southerly breeze at just 10 miles per hour, and we're going to stay calm at first, but later this evening, and we might not be so fortunate. 60s and low 70s across the board, but it's also a little on the humid side this morning. And that wind predominantly out of the south by southeast, really not doing a whole lot to make things feel any better. If anything, it brings in more warmth. And more moisture, those dew points are really going to be a factor today as humidity creeps up more and more. Here's live to Aqua Radar this morning. And like I said, we do have some areas of showers and thunderstorms out there. South and east of Watertown along I-29 toward Brookings and Madison. And eventually headed over into Moody County. And then out in Pier, south and west, we've been seeing some stronger thunderstorms out that way as well. It's not the last time we're going to be talking about this kind of instability. We'll break down those details coming up. All right, thank you very much, Adam. Well, Good Earth State Park near Sioux Falls is encouraging you to pick up a camera this summer. Good Earth is hosting its sixth annual summer photo contest. This year's categories include weather, people in the park, and anything goes, allowing people to photograph everything from sunrises and sunsets to flowers and birds. I'm really into bird watching, so I like to bring out my Canon camera and I like to take pictures of birds. But you see some people come out here with those big two foot long lenses that get those really in depth pictures. I don't have that, but I'd love to have that someday. Now, photos must be taken at Good Earth State Park and be submitted by Monday, September 5th. While you're at the park, enjoy a free concert by the Cardboard Saints. The music begins at 4 p.m. A park entrance license is required for vehicles. The Sioux Falls Municipal Band performs a free concert at Terrace Park. They'll strike up the music starting at 8 p.m. American Legion Post 15 in Sioux Falls is hosting an all-you-can-eat pancake breakfast. Serving time goes from 8.30 to noon at the South Dakota Military Heritage Alliance. The cost is $7, $2 for children. Watch archaeologists and cover secrets from the past during Archaeology Awareness Days at the prehistoric Indian village in Mitchell. Visitors can also make their own primitive pottery, watch demonstrations of Native American games, and kids can dig for their free arrowheads. You can get your fill of 4th of July fireworks a day early. Fireworks shows are taking place tonight in Belfouche, Garrison, Leed, and Sturgis. The Sioux Valley Model Engineer Society is hosting an open house at their club building on the north side of the fairgrounds. The free open house runs from 10 to 4. Club members will be running their model trains Monday night ahead of the fireworks show at the fairgrounds. Adam? 
Well, we'll watch these showers and thunderstorms continue to push eastward over the course of your morning. Sub severe in intensity for now, but we've already seen a couple of severe thunderstorm warnings pop up earlier in the day. And it wouldn't surprise me if a couple more came around even before we get ready for round two today, which will be later this evening and into the night. So you will want to stay weather aware. Severe weather outlook keeps a slight risk of a two out of five in place across basically everybody in Kelo land, unless you are south and east of Sioux Falls in Minnesota and Iowa. Wind and hail are going to be the main concerns with any storm that gets its act together. Of course, there's always that non zero risk for an isolated tornado with any storm that is able to get itself going. Here's 8 p.m. on Sunday, and we'll continue to watch that threat for strong to severe thunderstorms into the night and early morning hours of your Monday. Now, Fourth of July starts off quiet. It does get hot and humid, but we start off quiet all the same. It's once we get beyond about 5 p.m., we need to watch things with the chance for showers and thunderstorms coming up into the first part of your night. So that outlook is subject to change, but just know that we are going to watch that potential in place for some stronger thunderstorms to come around. Tuesday, unfortunately, we do it all over again. Another chance for showers and thunderstorms. Here's Monday's outlook. Fourth of July, a marginal risk of a one out of five in green. In yellow, that's a slight risk of a two out of five pier to Mulbridge. Uh, into Wall, just around Rapid City, up into Buffalo. Tuesday's risk, more of the same, but we expand the slight risk toward Mitchell to the south and east. Again, wind and hail will be the main concerns for Monday as well as Tuesday. Highs today, either side of 90 to the east into the 90s out west, and it is going to be a little more humid as well. Showers and thunderstorms will be possible this evening into the night with lows in the 60s to low 70s. And your 4th of July outlook, hot and humid with a few thunderstorms possible as well. Uh, highs will be in the mid-90s to near 100, especially the further south you go. Your seven-day forecast will keep in that daily chance for showers and thunderstorms along the way through at least midweek, maybe even toward the end of the week as well. All the while, near to above average temperatures went out with no relief in sight in that regard anytime soon. Have a great day, everybody. For more on your local news, weather, and sports, you can always head on over to kelloland.com.